The roller skating rink is one of the places where African Americans have adapted bland American pastimes into vital subcultures that enable people to express their individuality together. And we were the one. This year, we was taking skate war. Let's go, man. People from all over the world enjoy what is called artistic roller skating. But Baltimore, sometimes called Snap City, has its own flair. Because of the personalities drawn to the center, Shake and Bake is more than just a roller skating rink. After closing down for repairs in August of 2017, it recently reopened and continues to be a staple in Baltimore and the roller skating community beyond, the way it's been for decades. Shake and Bake was the mecca of skating on the East Coast. People came from D.C., Virginia, Pennsylvania, Delaware, every night, Virginia, just, just to skate at Shake and Bake. Well, it's great because you have everybody from uh, school teachers to janitors, to doctors, you got Princeton men, you got Harvard men, you got Tuskegee men, Howard men. So you have an influx of good people coming into the community so the kids just don't see all the poverty and, and you know, the corruption in the community. So we bring that to the community as well. Shake and Bake as a whole to the people that have been skating for a long time. It's a culture. Um, we skate religiously. Um, we're very loyal to Shake and Bake. We come here, we show up, we spread love. We're like, it's like a big family. Everybody knows everyone's name. And when it closed down, it was a sadness. And now that it's opened back up, if you look out on the floor, everyone's happy. Smiling, enjoying the music, the music's good. So we love the bake. I appreciate it being open, really do. Shake and Bake Family Fun Center sits on the historic Pennsylvania Avenue, once known as a popular black entertainment hub where businesses thrived and black performers could showcase their talent without Jim Crow segregation. The center holds both a roller skating rink and a bowling alley. A room in the front of the building is named after Billie Holiday. The environment, man, is soulful, man. It's Baltimore City right here. This is the liveness of it. Man, you just see people just doing back in the day with that little skate. Man, hey, I'm getting jealous on some of the ones who know how to flip around. I want to trip one of them, but I ain't going to do it. You know what I mean? It's all love. It's all love. Oh, my God. So many memories when I came in today because I haven't been here in years. So I just imagine, like, all the guys doing all the tricks coming around the ring. So it just brought back memories because I haven't been here in years. Shake and Bake was originally started by NFL star and Baltimore Colts wide receiver Glenn Shake and Bake Dowdy in 1982. Dowdy was a popular, charismatic star who even penned a song after himself, using a band made up entirely of Baltimore Colts players. The Family Fun Center was the first of its kind with over 70,000 square feet. Dowdy secured over $5.2 million in funding. At the recent reopening, Dowdy took shots at present-day athletes like Colin Kaepernick and their protests of police shooting unarmed black men, saying that instead of protesting, he opened the building for the community. About athletes who were protesting, we weren't protesting in 1982. We were building this because we didn't just talk. We got it done. But when Shake and Bake first opened, world-famous boxing champion Muhammad Ali was there. At the same time, he was the controversial athletic figure because of his stance against racism and the Vietnam War and his conversion to Islam. But building for the community is hard, especially to sustain. Only three years after opening Shake and Bake, Dowdy struggled financially and had trouble making loan payments, so he sold it to the city of Baltimore. The city has owned the building since 1985 and installed Anthony Williams Sr. as its operator and manager where he remained for almost three decades until the recent closure forced him out. When I shut it down, you'd have thought I shut down heaven. But all politics aside, people from the community want this building to stay and thrive. I actually formed the uh, Save the Shake and Bake Association. I'm the president of the National Association of Black Colleges and Universities. So if they, did, if they didn't follow through, we were going to make sure they followed through 
because this is a vital institution for the community. Well, I've been skating a long time. I mean, back, I guess, since I was in the 12th grade at Carver High School, Carver Vocational Technical High School. So I've been coming down the bay for a while. For many, roller skating is a therapeutic release, a fun physical activity. It is dancing on wheels. But it is often a community, a safe space, a reunion. In the 80s and 90s, when West Baltimore, like many urban areas, was facing the crack epidemic, Shake and Bake was a place for young people to escape. In 2015, it was near the heart of the uprising following the death of Freddie Gray. In 2016, when acclaimed Baltimore rapper Lil Scooter was murdered, people young and old blocked off Pennsylvania Avenue where he grew up to celebrate his life. Lil Scooter, baby, baby. Keep them bitches going crazy. Where did they gather? You guessed it, right in front of Shake and Bake. The city of Baltimore invested nearly $300,000 into reopening Shake and Bake. The brand new floors, lights, roof, kitchen, and heating system were all essential renovations. For many of the old timers, the new Shake and Bake is not perfect. People complain about the branding of The Bake. But in a neighborhood in serious need of resources, Shake and Bake represents the relationship that can exist between the community, government, and those who have a love for shaking, baking, and roller skating. For The Real News Network, with Will Arenas, I'm Easy Jackson. <laughs>